organic versus the whole idea of what is organic, you know, the fact that it's legislated by the USDA, it has a definition that, you know, is set by the government, but that is not exactly the same thing as what we think when we think organic, right? Um, so for all intents and purposes, when we do our farming, we say we're biological farming, right? Uh, which basically implies that everything we do on a farm in terms of building soil, fertilizing plants, you know, growing, period, is all done biologically. You know, we're not adding, you know, any raw chemicals to pesticides, uh, as pesticide or herbicide or fungicide. What we add is all things that we could derive from nature, right, that are derived from plants, right, or rock minerals. So everything that we do, uh, uh, while, you know, when we think about chemical inputs, everything, there's a certain topic called organic chemistry, right? So everything that's happening biologically does have a chemical basis, right? So there's different uh, uh, things like sulfur, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, those are all, you know, minerals, elements, right? that have chemical reactions underneath the soil. So even though I say biological farming, there's still, there's still chemical reactions that are happening biologically, right? But um, the differentiation is that I'm not going to the store to go buy sulfur, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to the store to go buy calcium, where you can you know, go to the store and get phosphorus and all these different types of things. You can go to a chemical lab and get that stuff. What we're getting are uh, plant materials and rock minerals that had those chemicals imbued inside of them and when we add it you know to the soil it does what it's supposed to do naturally right by virtue of you know god and biology and the reactions that happen activate the nutrient availability for the plant um, when i talk about biological farming like essentially uh the main components to this are soil the soil food web right there's a um, our goal is to really stimulate the uh, microbial or microbes and bacteria and insects that live within the soil, right? So that they can interact and spur, you know, the availability of these different types of nutrients that the plants need. So when we talk about what plants need, you know, we eat plants not just for the sake of their fibrous content, right? We eat the plants because they have you know, the magnesium we need, they have calcium we need, they have the phosphorus we need, they have uh, the manganese that we need, they have the sulfur that we need, you know, they have all those uh, 52 uh, elements that our bodies need to regenerate cells and, you know, for our brains to function properly, right? Um, but the animals and life that lives inside, that live inside the soil actually produce those things and activate those things. Um, so uh, when we talk about the soil food web, every day, every second, every minute, you know, beneath our feet, there's millions and millions and millions of different types of life forms that are interacting from the smallest, you know, bacteria to, you know, insects like earthworms, uh, potato bugs, you know, uh, all types of weird little critters you know, even down to rodents and birds, you know, voles, moles, you know, even us, you know, all that stuff is interacting beneath the soil. Um, so our goal is really not to uh, uh, try to go against nature. Our goal is to work with nature and to help, you know, spur nature forward, right? Our goal is to kind of create the environment so that nature does what it's already designed to do, right? Uh, what's happened in terms of our farming endeavors and gardening endeavors has gotten super reliant on uh, these uh, mega companies that make a million and one different products from your miracle grows to your roundups to, you know, uh, those little uh, sticks that you stick inside of the soil to try to keep your plants fertilized. It's a million and one different products you can buy that people uh, have been marketing to try to help uh, your gardening go easier. But nothing makes your gardening go easier than having healthy soil, because that's the basis, that's the foundation of everything. Uh, so, um, 
the different tools that we use in order to make that happen uh, are called soil amendments. That's the first thing that I kind of uh, talk about, just because these are, I guess, if I had to say my uh, best practices or, or my, the stars of the show are the different uh, natural elements, plant-based elements that we add to the soil to help activate uh, the soil life. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna say is that most urban soils that you interact with has very little soil life, right? Um, we live in spaces, residential uh, neighborhoods that you know somebody built a house and what they did is they basically stripped the topsoil, right? Uh, and they bring in, you know, fill dirt, which lots of rocks and things like that that don't have a lot of life and activity, right? So when we're gardening in our backyards or even in spaces like this, what we're trying to do is bring that life back to the soil. Um, the, uh, the, the, the idea uh, of biological soil amendments are, these are green, yeah, I'm gonna come a little closer if you wanna touch it. These are, uh, these are materials that, uh, when placed inside of even topsoil or rocky soil, they'll start to activate uh, the microbial life, which then starts to activate the insect life, which then starts to activate the animal life, and all those different things interact in order to build the soil. So uh, the first question I want to ask y'all before we you know, start to look at the actual soil is, have you ever walked through the forest? Anybody ever walk through mm -hmm. forest, right? All the time. And metaphorically too. Right, and metaphorically, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, when you walk through the forest, uh, have you ever thought to yourself, who rakes the leaves in the fall in the forest? No. No. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Nobody. It the bears. Right. It grows it back breaks in. It down and, 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 and helps the ecosystem. Back in. Right? Yeah, right. right. And so, you think about those trees, right? that are in some cases hundreds of years old, right? Mm -hmm. Those trees have created, you know, a closed loop for their development, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Every every year uh, those plant those those trees drop their leaves down to the forest floor, right? Uh, those leaves fall at the base of the root of the of the trees. Animals die in the forest. There's no, you know, animal control to come through the forest and come scoop up a dead deer or scoop up a dead squirrel or a raccoon or anything like that. Those uh, life forms, the leaves, the dead animals, and even when the animals defecate, they all that stuff decomposes on the, on the, on the forest floor, right? So that uh, cycle of life is providing the trees with the food that they need right inside of the soil and of course you know sunlight oxygen air and water and it acts and it allows those trees to be prolific in the forest right so if you can imagine that pattern or that that cycle that system happening in the forest every you know year every day that is the type of uh pattern that we're trying to replicate in our gardens and in our farms we want the, the, the we want the natural cycles of, 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 of plant life to fertilize the soil. So those, when those trees drop their leaves, it's usually a thick layer, right? That stuff, as uh, Ms. Williams said, decomposes, right? And it turns into what is called uh, hummus, uh, humus, right? Which is essentially compost, right? As those plant leaves uh, start to decompose and disintegrate, they release the nutrients that were inside of the leaves, right? And the uh, uh, fibrous carbon material turns into soil, right, over time. Uh, because we don't have trees all over our farms and our gardens, what we're trying to do is activate that same process through the addition of soil amendments, right? Um, so, uh, for example, uh, in this particular space, after we cut all of those weeds down that were as tall as 
uh, Miss Temple, we let all, we didn't take any of that away. We let it all sit on the space and slowly decompose, right? So what you're seeing here is probably like nine years worth of weeds 